You're listening to Culture Shock, a podcast that's igniting culture in your world. I'm your host, Michelle Werner, and I'm excited to share with you the people who live, breathe, practice, and study the cultures that you may not even know are all around you. Get ready to broaden your mind, perspective, outlook, and maybe learn a thing or two about others or even yourself. Hi everyone, I'm so excited you're listening to Culture Shock. Before you listen to this episode, I want to ask you to do a few things. First, have fun. My goal is to make learning about world cultures exciting and fun and maybe broaden your perspective about the vast diversity that's all around us. Second, open your mind, critically think, and explore. Everyone interviewed on this show represents a friend, a colleague, a neighbor, or even a family member. Knowing a little bit more about their culture will help you understand them and maybe understand yourself better. That said, those interviewed are not spokespeople for an entire culture. They are giving general overviews from their perspective. Third, try to get words like weird, bad, wrong, creepy, etc. out of your vocabulary when listening. What you're hearing is what real people around the country and the world do, think, and believe. That's what makes the world beautiful and diverse. So let's try to replace those words with words like different, interesting, fascinating, and intriguing. Last, ask questions. You may hear something you really like or want to know more about. Feel free to email me at michelle.werner530 at gmail.com and I can send you great resources. Now let's get listening to Culture Shock. So as you know, the theme for the season is faith, belief, and culture. Can you... Give me a little description of your definitions of faith, belief, and culture. Sure. So those are big words, and they're kind of, the question always becomes, in what order do you respond to them? Which one do you do first? So since you did them in that order, that's how I'll respond. <laughs> okay. So faith. Faith is fundamentally a quality of trust. It is a response that we make as individuals to the world around us, saying that on some level, I trust this world. I either trust relationships, I trust the fact that the sun's going to rise, I trust that there is a meaning and a direction, or at least a safe safety to the world. Belief, then, is more uh, narrow than that. Rather than simply the fundamental feeling of trust, belief points to knowledge or philosophy it's like the structure that you build on the landscape of faith so belief might include uh, ideas or doctrines it might include rituals or practices it is the sheer compilation of things that are important to you that help you live out this trust in the world and help you navigate it it's sort of a combination of the a Google map of your neighborhood of what you uh, find meaningful in your life. Now, culture is similar, but culture has um, perhaps a broader way that we live into it because culture is the vocabulary that shapes not only your beliefs, but your faith, your trust. Culture becomes the way that you organize your thoughts. It becomes the way you express and live out and prioritize. So culture can be good or bad. It can change as you gain more experiences. It can be broadened. Um, But fundamentally, I think culture is the, the building blocks out of which you erect the structures of belief And as you live in those structures and move through them and sometimes tear them down and build them up again, you then lead a life of living faith. Those were really good explanations. Can can you talk a little bit about Christian faiths, beliefs, and culture, whichever order you want to start in? Sure. So with Christianity, I suppose belief is obviously the word that pops to the fore for that. Um, So Christianity is going to be an approach to the world, an understanding of our place within it, guided by history, guided by scripture, and guided by our own spirit, our own um, 
personalization of the history and the scriptures. So the scriptures would point to a long story, a narrative that says that life has a meaning and that life has a direction, that it begins with creation by a loving creator that seeks to be in relationship with what has been made. That same creator then consistently moves through human life to guide, to nurture, um, at times to place choices before us and to hopefully uh, inspire us to choose our better angels, to choose what will keep us safe. Those beliefs then were at some point codified and written down in scriptures. Uh, we refer to the Hebrew scripture foundation of Christianity as the Old Testament. But that's about a 2,000 year process of people sitting around campfires, people telling stories, the women passing them on to the children. Um, those were stories told sometimes in exile and in trouble, trying to distinguish a, a reality and a a faith perspective when it was being challenged by contrary ones or opposing ones. In the fullness of time, as a, as a big Christian phrase, we would say uh, at a certain point, God intervened again and in the life and the ministry of Jesus Christ, the fullness of that prior story came together. Um, Christ, Jesus, uh, in this human existence, lived out a relationship with God and relationship to the world that we find paradigmatic. We find that as our touchstone or our central guide. People then reacted to Jesus, both in positive and negative ways. The negative ways involved a rejection, feeling threatened by this person, seeing him as a marginal Jewish figure that offered some level of threat to the existing power structure. And therefore he had to be silenced. Um, others saw him as simply not consequential enough to be worried about, and so he could be added to a list of others that were persecuted and, and crucified, killed during that period of history. The believers, the followers of Jesus that trusted his message, were also part of the first group that affirmed that no, this figure that was killed was actually raised to life, that he returned, was restored, appeared to them, spoke to them, and inspired them to continue the story of history. The 2000 year story now continued on for another concrete 200 years of writing scriptures, writing letters, sharing the ideas with one another. And then it's continued on to this time. So the belief in a nutshell is a, a Christian perspective on the, the flow of life and history from the beginning of creation through a focal point in the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that same flow continues on today in an ongoing relationship with the same God, now revealed as creator, as a savior, and as Holy Spirit. Those beliefs then spread out into the world into various expressions, faiths, churches, uh, groups, denominations, and they moved even beyond that into the cultures of the world. Uh, sometimes they have walked hand in hand with that culture, not always to the uh, benefit of the religion. They walked hand in hand with cultural ideas that wanted to appropriate others' lands, that wanted to dominate one group by another group. But they've also walked hand in hand with those inclinations of caring for those on the margins, speaking up for justice. So the belief has guided faith expressions and has impacted culture uh, in, in thousands of ways.